and then I go live and it's wrong. <laughs> a little better. Change it again here. Turn it down some more. <sighs> now it's not bright. What's up, everyone? Thanks for joining in. I see there's already some people here. And, of course, I'm just going to get everything out of the way. Oh, it looks like there's a ghost there for a second. <laughs> just liked it for the title. It's funny. <laughs> we will be talking about that for sure. Uh, but I don't know why I'm, I'm drinking some... <laughs> What's up, Rich Mitch? Drinking some... Uh, Seltzer water, and I was about to hold it up as if it had anything to do with this video. Anyway, first things out of the way, thank you for watching. Of course, <laughs> Robert Quinlan taking harder shots than I did last night. <laughs> anyway, first things first, thank you for watching. If uh, you wanted to support the channel in some way, of course, I have the Super Chat open. That's not a requirement, but it always helps. And I uh, always appreciate you watching and chiming in, asking questions. If you have any questions, just ask me. I'll try to get to them as soon as I can, but I'm going to go through them if I, um, one at a time, so it takes a while. Um, also, too, I have some uh, content on Beast Mate Reviews. I have one video coming today, so stay tuned for that. Uh, the shirt is from Taylor Stitch. I'm making a video about that soon. Um, it's cold outside, so really uh, glad to wear this. This is a Yosemite shirt. It's made of a chamois. Is that how you pronounce it? It's like that... It's like that uh, towel material, like the ShamWow. <laughs> why, no, why does nobody like Bulgari Aqua Pour Ohm? I like it. I think it's a really good one. Anyway, so also I have candy here. Let's see. Uh, Zakiria, how are you doing? Doing good here. Let's see. Hardcore Shredder says, hear about the new Slumber House release. Uh, they're supposedly supposed to be re-release of Sova, JK, etc. Uh, thank you, Rich. I appreciate that. They are good-looking shirts. <laughs> okay, so for the Slumber House release, I'm not exactly sure which ones are in the line. I'm imagining most are, are in the line. I know Sova is supposed to be in there, um, though I haven't seen an official bottle of it yet. Uh, but I know that there are new bottles. Um, they're very similar to the first bottles that he got when he first made the line years ago, but they're 30 mil. Um, he's been doing 30 mils for a long time. Um, and yes, uh, for one, one thing that is, is funny is all the names that he makes apparently are mostly just made up and the pronunciations he never has like strict, uh, pronunciations of except for JK, which is a pronunciation. A lot of people call it Jeek. Uh, but apparently it's pronounced JK. I'm not a pronunciation stickler, but I always thought that was funny. Daze says, uh, what do you think about Uomo Signature? I haven't tried that one, so I'm not really sure. <laughs> Robert Quinlan, I almost spent 2,000 euro last night drunk buying perfumes, <laughs> but was too drunk to remember my password. God is good. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. How are you doing, Dan? Dan Spano says, hey. Uh, let's hear these words. Which Blue Day Chanel projects the most, EDT, EDP, or Parfum? Um, I find that they're pretty similar. I haven't tried the Parfum version, so I'm not really sure about that. The EDT and the EDP on me were pretty similar, but I'm not really sure. I haven't tried them in a long time anyway. I just tried them for review, but I don't really, um, I don't really remember it. To me, they're underwhelming. Um, both of them were very underwhelming. Uh, Zach Ali says, Uomo Signature is incredibly disappointing. Uh, Jose Gonzalez, what do I think about Issey Miyake, Pulse of the Night? Man, Issey Miyake is one line that I do not keep up with, honestly. Um, I, you know, 
Every once in a while, I'll try some on just a wild hair. I'll try some of the new flankers and they're all really underwhelming, so I never really suggest them to anybody. I don't do reviews of them. Um, I just kind of stick with the ones that are, you know, like the, the tried and true line. Okay, so I got some candy, of course. M&Ms. So some of you guys are from uh, different countries, so you might not get these candies here. Um, and I might not eat these. M&Ms, the peanut kind. I think these are everywhere. And let's see, I got... Uh, let's see, what do I think of Carolina Herrera Chic for Men by uh, Maru CJ? Eh, it's okay. Not, not a fan of almost any Carolina Herrera. And the Chic was, was not good to me anyway. Too, too sugary. I got Almond Joys, one of my favorite candies. Has coconut covered in chocolate and then with an almond on top if you're not if you don't have that in your country. Zach Ali says, uh, just stocked up on another bottle of tea for two. Perfect for this time of year. Yes. One of my favorites, man. So good. Uh, Quam E81 says, hi, Dave. Have you tried anything from Parfums Vintage as of late? No, and I never will. I will never, ever review anything from them or ever work with them. I'll never speak of them unless someone asks me about it, and I will never do anything with them. So yeah, uh, Almond Joy, M&M's. I got Snickers. Oh man, Snickers are so good. One of my favorites. Uh, let's see, uh, Take 5. Reese's Take 5. These are really good. Obviously, Skittles. Got to have Skittles. Milk Duds. Those are always good. Those are like a theater food there. Here's one. Hershey's Cookies and Cream. These are really good. And then Heath Bar. I'm not sure if I'm going to eat all these. <laughs> right now, anyway. But let's start off with the Almond Joy, of course. Got to eat that right now. Mmm. Uh, Jake Lewis uh, says, David, is Dior Fahrenheit perfume discontinued? I'm not sure. I think it is. Jason Newton, I have not talked about it yet. I haven't talked about Red Adolescence just yet. I'm about to get into that. Um, of course, Sin of the Day, a cod by Luban. CK asked if I've tried Arquiste Architects Club. Have not. I've only tried one from Arquiste. That was Le Trog, and that was really good. I haven't tried anything else from them. I'm sorry. I think I also tried Dulcis, and that was really good. Um, but those are the only two that I've tried from them. I need to try more. I think it's a really great line. Really great concept. Here's a cod. A cod is brilliant, guys. So sometimes I'll have, on Instagram, I'll post a lot of pictures about things that are coming up soon. So uh, this is one of them. Yeah, Rich Mitch, we were speaking about Akkad the other day. So that reminded me of this, because I've been wanting to wear it, but it hasn't gotten cold enough, but it's been cold the last few days. So Akkad, a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant amber scent. One of the best, honestly, one of my favorites. One that I crave a lot. To me, it reminds me of kind of like, if you've ever had like um, something that's barrel aged, like some kind of, uh, some kind of um, alcohol that's barrel aged, it reminds me of that. So love it, absolutely love it. Wore it yesterday, wearing it, wearing it today again. Stylish Irishman says, or is it Irishman? <laughs> So what do you think of Grand Soir from uh, MFK? I like Grand Soir. I think it's good. I don't have much thoughts other than that, though. <laughs> Zach Ali says, uh, Akkad is brilliant. The whole line is brilliant. There's my finger. Yeah, it really is. I love Lubon. Of course, I don't love everything from them, but what I, <clears throat> what I think is really good is usually, like, brilliant. This is one of them. Corgon's another one. 
Idole de, uh, de Luban is another one. <laughs> Shabathon says, Akav was on uh, Sebastian Jara's best cheapies under $500 video. Yeah, that's right. That's funny. I don't know if he was actually being serious or if he was being tongue-in-cheek about, about cheapies. I almost think he's being serious. <laughs> he makes a lot of money, I think. All right. Neil says, uh, Dave, have you tried Milano Cento yet? Nope, have not. Haven't even heard of that one. Is Milano the line or is it Cento the line or what, who makes that? Daze, have I done a review of Interlude Man? Yes, I have. So if you've wondered if I've made a review of something, all you have to do is just do a search in, in YouTube and then put Fragrance Bros. So put Interlude Man, Fragrance Bros, and it'll come right up. So, let's talk about the dirtiness. <laughs> so, one thing I've been really wanting to talk about is uh, Red Alessence's new line. And I think he's been doing a great job. Um, and how he has already won. He's already won. <laughs> he hasn't even released the fragrance, but yet he's already won. And one of the things that he's already, he's already on top about He's already told you the perfumers. He's already told you the concept. Every video that he makes is just another layer of his fragrance line. And with each video, it builds more hype around the, the line. So I'm actually really excited about the line. I think his idea is um, a great idea. I think he has just an amazing amount of experience with his line. I'm sorry, with, with, his, um, with his nose, he's got an amazing nose. So he's gonna be the creative director and he's gonna have other uh, perfumers make the, the fragrance. Now these perfumers are very good. Um, I only know of like a couple of them. Some of them I haven't tried fragrances from them that I know of. But um, again, uh, Stephen has great taste and he's tried a lot of fragrances so I'm sure that all the perfumers that he has are, are going to be really good. The first one, Bertrand Duchefour, has me really excited. I'm not, I, I don't love everything that Bertrand Duchefour makes, but I think that his wheelhouse really is gourmands and that um, he makes a, a lot, a lot of just absolute powerhouse winners. So um, thrilled, thrilled about uh, him being on there. Um, the other thing too is that he, he's actually giving information, <laughs> but, uh, so everything you already know, like what to expect and that by itself is building hype. So one of the things that, that, so as a writer, so I'm a writer, one of the things that you learn is the difference between suspense and false suspense. Suspense actually builds intrigue based on facts that you know and then and then mysteries that you don't know and weaving those and kind of kind of dishing out stuff to the uh, to the audience one piece at a time. False suspense is kind of self-referential, trying to build a sense of suspense uh, where there actually is no information there. To me, that's a lot of what uh, Fragrance One was about. It was about a sense of false hype, where <laughs> false suspense, AKA Game of Thrones season eight. Exactly, you're exactly right. That's false suspense. So, um, so um, Fragr Fragrance One operated on a false sense of hype that there already should have been hype there was the premise and that he was slowly giving you information but not really giving you information. He was just giving you more of a sense of hype leading to you the one hype to the next hype. So that was one reason why it was never a good campaign to start with. Um, and yes, Hillary Schwartz says he's going to be having sampling options. That is another really big winner there for uh, Red Adolescence because no one wants to buy, um, blind buy, a $200 fragrance that they haven't tried. And so having a, a sample option is paramount 
to starting a line. So, yeah. So, so he's already off to a really great start. I think his first fragrance, I think this is the first fragrance, the one with Bertrand du Chiffre, going to be a gourmand fragrance. And um, someone may have all the notes. I didn't, I didn't look at all the notes for this video. Uh, but some of the notes that I remember are toffee and uh, I believe chocolate and caramel. And I believe there was apple in there and maybe coffee. I'm not really sure. But to me, it really, when, it, when he talked about it, it really reminded me of like one of those kind of gourmet chocolate covered apples whenever he was talking about it. I'm not sure if apple's in the notes. Maybe you guys can uh, correct me on that. But regardless, uh, yeah, there he goes. <laughs> whack pack, whack pack in the house. Serapio Silva. Yeah, can't wait for, for Steven's line. So anyway, um, okay, so here we go. The platypus, apple, toffee, almond are what he remembers. Okay. <laughs> whack pack. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I, I believe you're right. I think, uh, I think almond is in there. I might be wrong about coffee then. So apple toffee, I remember caramel was in there. And I think chocolate. Hillary says, uh, I think he said it will have a cherry-like effect in the opening despite that not being a note. Okay, that's cool. That might be from the, um, from the, from the almond. So anyway, so yeah, the first one is a gourmand fragrance. Definitely in... Uh, Great hands with Bertrand Duchafour. I think he's going to do an amazing job. And uh, it just sounds great. It, it sounds great. Unlike um, Office One, which, what is Office One supposed to be about? Apparently, women liking you. I think that's supposed to be the theme. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, the other thing I think is really great about Stephen's line is that he's giving... The perfumers kind of free reign to do what they want with um, a general theme in mind, and um, and then and then the buck stops with um, with Stephen being the creative director, kind of uh, going back and forth there with some things. I think that's really great. And to me, what I like about that is that when you give someone who is in that industry, who's creative, who does that all the time, when you give them an opportunity to express their creativity in the way that they want to, those are usually the times that blow you away, that really make you excited. So that's what I'm really, uh, really thrilled about, really excited to see what the perfumer is actually excited about and, and uh, wants to make. So that sounds great. Uh, David Cook says, miss the first bit. Will you be trying Mr. Smelly's fragrance? Yeah, definitely. I definitely want to try it, see what it's like. Um, again, I think his fragrance <laughs> is going to be really good too. Um, I don't know, really know that much about it. Um, I haven't been watching many videos recently. So he may have some information on YouTube that I'm just not privy to. I'm not really sure. Uh, but I would love to know if, there, if he released any notes or has any information about um, how it's being made or who's making it or anything. Rich Mitch, are you a Fougere fan? It depends. Uh, sometimes, not often, but sometimes. Uh, Reza says, can you describe for me why lines like these can be better than famous brands? Um, I mean, I, I think it's mostly just down to how it's made. And... Um, the fact that they take more risks. Famous lines, a lot of times, just don't take risks. What they want to do is just, they just want to make something that will sell. So the safe thing for them to do is to uh, copy a trend. So that's generally what a lot of uh, popular brands do. And they don't want to try to set the trend because that's a little bit too much of a risk for them. So they want to just follow the trend. Okay, Tyler Petrosky says, Smelly's is a classic fougere. Okay. So still excited. I'm still excited to smell it. Um, I don't love Fougere, so I'm not sure how I'll like that, um, but we'll see. I'm sure it won't smell like mothballs. So, <laughs> so there's a win right there. <laughs> Sh 
Shave a thon, is he using a bottler and a distributor? If not, the price point of $200 is very high. Um, well, I don't think that's too high. I think that's a, a pretty good price, especially for some, some, something that you're going to get that is uh, in the niche ballpark. You're getting really high quality juice. You're getting, um, um, you're also getting um, great perfumers. I, I don't think that's too high. Hardcore Shredder says, have you ever considered doing uh, what these frag heads are doing, like making your own for fun? Not really, honestly. Oh, let's see. I'm really not interested in making my own line, especially not at this point. Uh, maybe someday in the future, but, but no, not really at all. Okay, the platypus says, top almond, saffron, cinnamon, mid apple, toffee, and base are ambergris, oak moss, caramel, chocolate, driftwood, and musk. That's right. That's right. Okay, so that sounds incredible. <laughs> okay, so apple, awesome. Saffron. I know he said that it has like a like a leathery type of uh, quality in there, and he says that's from the saffron. So yeah, definitely, saffron is is one note that they use a lot of times in a leather accord. So we'll see how that that is. I'm really excited about this. It has that leather apple, and then. Uh, Toffee thing, that's gonna be great. <laughs> Date for men, what a silly name. It is a silly name. The whole line is just dumb. The whole line is dumb. And I'm just, I, I don't know, I'm like, I don't even watch Jeremy's channel. It's, it's not interesting to me, but even I, not watching his channel, I'm tired of seeing all the updates and all just the silliness wrapped around why his fragrance is the best. Like he had a fragrance, he had a, he had a video where he rated it a 10 out of 10, his own fragrance. And more, more videos on the way. I don't know if he is, I don't know where he stands uh, financially, but it seems like he must be in debt up to his eyeballs and his fragrance is not selling well. But I don't see why it would because it's not a good fragrance and it's definitely not a niche fragrance. Like I, I don't know what niche uh, fragrance reseller would want to stock Office One because for one, it's not good. And, and two, like I, I, he thinks there's an audience for it He's scrambling under his own audience to sell his fragrance. The thing about the thing about uh, Redolescence too, I think he has enough um, enough relationships in the community and with a lot of different uh, companies, or whatever, that he it will be easy for him to sell his line in certain boutiques. But also too, his line is niche. Like whenever you see it with the perfumers, with the notes, with the concept, that is niche. That is exactly what boutiques are looking for. And his line has already won. It's already won. And it's already going to do well. And it already has a genuine uh, sense of hype for that reason, because it has people wanting to smell the fragrance because they know what they're looking at. They know the price point. They know the notes of at least one of them that he can talk about. He, they, we know the perfumers. And like any questions that we have, he's answering them. CK says he did say they will be under $200 and 25% concentration, which I think that's great. If it's under $200, I think that's a fair price and 25% concentration is gonna be very strong, so. Shavathon says, are you kidding? Are you aware that the markup is on fragrances without advertising distribution fees? It's insane. I mean, like, are you, are you asking me if it's insane to make a profit? I mean, I don't think that's the case. Um, I, don't think that, I don't think that price is unfair. I think that's a very reasonable price for what you're getting in return. You're getting a very high quality fragrance uh, with a lot of great uh, experience and I think a great nose behind it. Um, so, I mean, I don't care what the fees are. I don't care what the prices are. 
Only thing I care about is, is the final product worth the price to pay? And I think, just based on what um, Stephen has mentioned, I think that it will be. So only time will tell. I mean, maybe I could change my tune whenever I smell it. But um, I, think that it, I think that it already is worth the price. And we don't know what the final price is. I don't think he's revealed like what the final price is. Uh, my guess is it's probably going to be around like 185 or so. But that's just a ballpark range. If he says it's going to be under uh, $200, it's either going to be like 195 or maybe he might go a little bit lower. And, but I don't, I don't think it's going to be any lower than 175 Pure speculation, but that's just my guess. Tyler Petrosky says, it's too high if it smells like bergamot and broxen and cardamom, a.k.a. mothballs. That's true. Oh, man, what a mess that fragrance is. I get flack for saying that it smells like mothballs. And some people say, oh, it's, it's, seriously, what? Are you serious? It smells like mothballs? It's like, no one, it doesn't smell like mothballs. I'm like, man, I'm not the only person that thinks it smells like mothballs. There's other reviewers who said it smells like mothballs as well. And then in the comments, a lot of people said, oh, you're right. It does smell like mothballs. So, yeah, mothballs. And Jake Lewis says, David, tell me how excited you are for Date for Men, please. <laughs> I am so excited for making the video about it because um, I'm absolutely sure that it's going to be bad. <laughs> and we already know it's going to be bad. We know it's going to be bad because of the experience of the creative director, which is Jeremy. He, he has terrible experience. Um, so we know it's going to be bad. Office for Men was like his masterwork, guys. Office for Men was a travesty of a fragrance. It was utter, utter garbage. Human Irani says, uh, what do you think about MFK Baccarat Rouge 540, especially the X-Trait version? So I haven't tried the X-Trait version, but I've tried the regular version, and I think it's good. Um, I don't think it's amazing. Um, I, just, I think it's also funny that it's made so many copies. Like there's a lot of people copying Baccarat Rouge 540. Why? It's not that great. <laughs> clown one. <laughs> Hardcore Shredder, Clown one. That's right. That'll be next. That'll be the flanker. The Platypus says, don't you love that he puts a promo every video and then he ranks his video number one on a list after promoting a two for one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Should be in the top two, right? Top two and top one. All right, let's eat Heath Bar real quick. God, I love Heath Bars. So... Tyler Petrosky, he's making a candle called Movie Night. I think you're joking, but if you're serious, tell me the ser <laughs> Tell me if you're serious or not. <laughs> CK Alexandria cloned Office for Men. I saw. Does not surprise me at all. Good for them. <laughs> the only time I want to, uh, I want to see a. That's the only time I want to see a, um, a copy. Okay, so here's another fragrance I'm excited about real quick. I have a, um, I showed a little bit of video on this on um, Instagram. This is L'Arms du Désert by uh, Atelier Dor. Dor. God, look at this bottle, guys. Insane bottle, insane. Now that's a bottle, wow, man. Just an incredible amber scent. Amber and myrrh and incense. Whew. So that's a sneak peek. Video about that is coming soon. 
Been sitting on that one for a while, but I need to make that one. Office One is the goat. <laughs> it is a definite hairy goat for sure. <laughs> Tyler Petrosky, he's dead serious about the movie night candle? Wow. He wanted to name it Netflix and chill, but couldn't because of copyright issues. <laughs> wow. Dude, he is floundering. He is floundering. Vladimir Arsovsky, do you like, uh, do you try the Avon line? I have. It's not good. It's not good at all. Very bad. Very bad. What's funny is I know someone who works for Avon, and they tried to get me to smell it, and I was like, I, I. They wanted me to give like their my opinion of what they were like, and I was like, you don't want me to do this. <laughs> Platypus says, I think the best you can hope for from uh, Steven is Aqua de Parma pricing. Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, the thing is, like, Steven is not trying to sell to everyone. He's trying to make a good fragrance. That is his bottom line. And he wants to price it like that. And I think that uh, under $200, I think, is fair. I don't think that's, um, like, all things considered, I think that's pretty average for a niche fragrance. Uh, Reza says, how can you, how can you, uh, by blind smelling, distinguish something is niche or not? Uh, um, you can't. Niche is not a designation of quality. Um, that, this is why the term niche is a bad, uh, is a bad word. Um, I, I should say it's, it's not good nomenclature for the community. And I think honestly that we should stop using the term niche and designer because it creates it creates really bizarre um, associations around the terms that aren't by definition connected to them. So niche is talking about an audience, not by quality. So you can't distinguish <laughs> by just smelling it whether something is niche or not necessarily. I mean, you, you could smell if something is good or bad. Um, but you can't really say if something is niche or not. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, I, I, like, I, I just get like dumbfounded. A lot of times, like the conversation will, will shift to like Creed, like is Creed niche or is Tom, is Tom Ford niche? What about Christian Dior? Are they designer? Stuff like that. I'm like, it's a silly argument because, um, you're talking about nomenclature that doesn't make sense and trying to apply that to a brand that is making high quality fragrances and more accessible fragrances. So, no. <laughs> Dase says, don't hold it against me, but I purchased a five mil decant of Office for One. That was a waste of 10 bucks. <laughs> well, at least you tried it. I mean, I think honestly, trying it for 10 bucks is, is a much better investment than 150. Get right says, what's a good upgrade to Roshas Man? So, um, I think there's two that uh, get get compared a lot. Um, one is New Harlem by Bond Number no. Nine. That's okay. Um, this one is better. This one is uh, Teo Cabanel Cafe Cabanel, and this one is fantastic. Now, this one I think you can only get this from. I think this. I, I think you can get this. And uh, I don't think you can get this in the UK and in, in the USA just yet if you're in the USA or North America. Um, but definitely check that one out. This, this is a lot better. Um, and, oh man, come on. Come on, box. So yeah, excellent, excellent, excellent. It has like heliotrope and coffee and almond milk and sandalwood. It's in, oh, so, so good. Awesome. <laughs> Michael Christopher, we need a fragrance bros line. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> Tyler Petrosky, have you tried Queer Ottoman by Parfums de Pierre? Yeah, I have. It's good. I like it. 
Um, but it's been a long time, so I don't, I, have, I don't have many thoughts other than that. But it was very good. Um, Parfums and Pure is a very good line. <laughs> Usual suspect. <laughs> JR quit because he hates you, right? No. <laughs> I talk to him all the time. We just went out the other day. The platypus says, oh, I have zero problems with Steven's pricing, especially because he is offering ways to sample it before buying, even at $200. You're looking at a discounted bottle of Parfums Marley price. Daze says, even if Steve Stevens makes me feel some kind of way, like Cuba says, I will be buying a full bottle even at $200. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think, um, I mean, I think that quality-wise, it's going to be worth every penny, you know, without having smelled it first, obviously. So I need to smell it first, but I think that it's going to be really good. Juvenile Pineda says, uh, Parfums de Marley Kalan. Thoughts? Okay, so I have a video about that coming up, and I like Kalan. Um, I like it like I like, um, like I like um, Leighton Exclusif, and like I like uh, Baccarat Rouge 540. So um, I think those are good, and Kalan is good. It's the best thing ever, no. But it is very strong. So if you like really strong fragrances. Kalan is like one really strong horse. And two, if you're like, if you're looking for Baccarat Rouge 540, but you are also thinking about the X-Straight, I think Kalan is a better alternative to those um, just because it's so strong, extremely strong. So Pito78 says, Steve is a humble man. I think he, he is going to bring something good. I totally agree with you. That's one quality that I really like about him and his channel um, is his humility. And I've met him in person and talked to him, and he was that way in person too. That's what I love about him. And I think that he has the ability to talk about his fragrance in a way that is detached from ego and to listen to reviews that is detached from ego too. Unlike Jeremy Fragrance, which I think is all attached to his ego. Um, and that's to Jeremy's detriment. Um, because he can't detach that from his ego, he's not gonna be able to get past that. And everything that he makes or that Alberto Marias makes or whatever perfumer he gets, he thinks should be great. And if anyone disagrees with them, then he has proof that they're wrong. Um, I think Jeremy, I think Stephen is the opposite in that. I think he has the ability to um, humbly accept any kind of criticism or maybe e even disagreement. And even, too, to accept praise without, without it going to his head. And I think that's one thing that's going to make Stephen a big success. Get right says, thanks, David. Just answered my question. Thanks again. You're welcome. Sorry, guys, I'm not getting every question. I'm trying to answer uh, as many as I can. I know I missed um, when talking about, uh, when going through my long um, diatribe there about <laughs> Stephen's fragrance in Office One. Jason Navarro, yeah, South Korea here. Wow, awesome. Thanks for joining. Hardcore Shredder says, uh, maybe niche should be replaced as in, uh, independent boutique to designer, maybe. Yes, I definitely think that. I think that niche should be changed to boutique. That's why I use a lot of times. I try to say boutique because that refers to a different uh, market of fragrances. And I try not to say designer either because um, designer is... Um, so what I generally try to do is I, tr I try to distinguish it between boutique and mainstream. And I think that has two, um, I think those are more accurate for the type of fragrances and they describe um, 
the audiences as well as the types of fragrances better than niche and designer. When you say designer, that doesn't really describe what the fragrances are like. Mainstream does in some ways. It says it's going to be very likable to a mass appealing audience, and that's also the audience. You know, it's a mainstream audience. Boutique is very specific. Niche is as well, but I think moving away from niche um, to something that is specific as well would be a good thing. And boutique, they're sold in boutiques. So that tells you where these fragrances are being sold as well. It's a boutique market. Boutique items are often higher quality and they're more, they're higher uh, price. So it kind of tells you the price and the quality as well uh, by saying that. So that's what I try to do. That's why I say boutique versus um, mainstream. All right, <laughs> just got a text there for a second there. Okay, Frank Hansen says, after the terrible Office for Men release, it is perfect timing for Steven to release his line. It will be compared to Office, and I'm sure Steven's line will be much, much better. Totally agree on every point. I think that's, I think it's great. And from what you can see, Steven is taking, he's, <laughs> he's, doing, he's doing a great job of, um, taking similar steps that uh, Jeremy Fragrance did, but doing it far better each time. So um, he's learned already from Jeremy's mistakes. So for one, he's already diversified his line. So he has multiple fragrances coming out for his line already. Not just one, multiple ones. Um, they're going to be high quality. He's you know, told you that, told you the, the price range. He's giving you all the information in each video and so each step along the way um, just gets more and more clear and just builds more anticipation of the fragrances that are already going to be good. So I'm really excited about it. I, you know, I like that he's giving out bits and pieces of information. Um, and I like that they're actual bits of information. <laughs> What I thought was strange about the way that Jeremy Fragrance did was he did multiple videos about the same thing without giving any information. <laughs> NH says, I was really intrigued by his choice of perfumers. That really made me want to try them. I agree. So some of the perfumers I haven't, I, I don't think that I've tried anything from, like especially that one guy from that did something with Zoologist. Uh, I forgot his name, but I think he said he did T-Rex by Zoologist. So I'm, I'm actually really excited to try that one. Um, Bertrand Duchafour, like I said, is one that has made some absolutely legendary fragrances. I don't love everything that he's made, but he usually always has a really artistic uh, style. And um, I'm really excited to try his Gourmand, which is right, right up his alley. <laughs> Ramon Garcia, so happy a genuine person is competing against that clown. And this is this is one of the things that is going to be Jeremy's downfall, is that um, someone is going to do something similar to him, and it's going to be a massive success. Stevens is going to be a success, like very successful. And I think everyone can already see that. He has everything in place to be a success. And even if not everyone likes the fragrances. It's going to get a lot of people who love it for all the reasons that we've already described. And um, that is going to be something that is really going to, again, hurt the ego of Jeremy because the success of Office One is connected to his ego, apparently, from everything that we've seen from um, his video. So that's going to be something that's going to be, I, I don't know how he's going to handle it. Juvenile Pineda says, will you pass down the hobby to your future kids? I mean, not really. It's not something that I, it's, it's something that 
I found um, just going through life, I, I don't necessarily, like it's not something that I really wish to pass down to my kids. It's because I don't necessarily see it as like a, um, a necessary skill to have in life or anything. Um, but my kids do like what I'm doing and they know what I'm doing. Um, like my son especially asked me if I'm famous and I say no, <laughs> but he knows that I'm on, um, on YouTube. He knows that I make videos. He's seen some of the videos and, uh, he, he talks about that sometimes. Both of my kids like fragrances and I have certain fragrances that they can wear occasionally. And so they like that. And so, so, um, I guess, you know, in some ways I am passing it down to my kids. Um, but it's not, it's not like something that I'm trying to do on purpose, unlike some things. Like, I definitely want to pass down certain things like a love for reading for my kids because I think that's um, a necessary key to success in life. Uh, and then other things too, like I think uh, curating a good taste in music and even explaining music in general, why I like it and some things, that I'm also trying to deliberately do to my kids. And that's, that's catching on too. So, um, along, you know, along with other things too, like um, sports or nature, and then obviously building character and certain character um, abilities and things like that. I want that, those are more important to me um, than, than fragrance. Fragrance is kind of, you know, way down the list. And so if they, if they get that too, then well, that's cool, but it's not like necessary. Great question. <laughs> Kodak filter, he's doing an even better job of having you wax euphoric about his line before you even smell it. I, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think that's one thing that is already in his favor. Like, like I said, he, he's, he's built legitimate hype without, without trying to build hype. He's just been giving the information that, he's need, that he wants to give away and that I think is necessary for, um, for building anticipation. So people are already really excited. I'm really excited, guys. <laughs> really, really excited about this. And there have been other, other YouTubers who have dabbled in fragrance or started lines. And some have gotten some traction here and there, but I, I genuinely think that Steven has like crossed every T, dotted every I. His line is going to be great. That's, so that's my prediction anyway. Now again, maybe I smell it and I come to a completely different conclusion and I think these aren't good or um, I don't like them or maybe they're good, but they're just not for me, something like that. I'll give you my honest opinion about it. Steven is a friend of mine and I also know that he will not, I also know that he can take honest criticism and he, can, he knows that it's not a criticism about him. It's about the criticism about the work itself. And so, um, uh, so that, that's one thing that actually makes me, again, excited to try it and review the line. And, you know, I don't know if he's going to give me anything. I'm not expecting anything from him. Um, he might, which, you know, would be great if he did. He may just give me samples, like, you know, sample vials like he is giving everybody else. I have no idea. I, I have zero expectation about what's going to happen. But regardless, I'm really, really excited about the line and I definitely want to try it out. And I will. Um, so if I don't get anything from him, I'll, I'll be buying uh, at least some samples to try. Greg Schlegel says, not really into Steven's Gourmand release, but more interested in Mr. Smelly's classic masculine. Uh, been on a classy, gentlemanly kick recently. What's your opinion of Dan's release coming 2020? So I am, I'm definitely excited about that one. I'm not, that type of fragrance is generally not my thing. Um, so 
I don't really know what I will think about it. But I am excited about it because, again, Mr. Smelly has a lot of experience as well. He has a great nose. He has great taste. And um, he has a different perspective. So I'm really excited to try that one. Rich Mitch, have you tried, have you smelled Creed for kids? I have not. <laughs> I've been wanting to try it. Not bad. Okay. Roberts, Stephen, uh, Roberts says, which Stephen are you talking about? I'm talking about Red Adolescence, his uh, fragrance line. <laughs> Tyler Petrosky, the juice is ready. Smash your head, Daver. <laughs> But yeah, I am try I'm excited to try uh, Mr. Smelly's line, uh, see what it's like. I'm also, I'm also curious, too, because I know a few people, a few of the British um, reviewers are more into that type of fougere than, um, than maybe other people. And so I wonder if it's a cultural thing or if it was just coincidence. So if it's a cultural thing, I'm also still excited about it because I, I like that kind of difference in perspective there, and I want to I want to see how that is. <laughs> so Roosh USA says is it going to triple the price and then do a two for one. <laughs> probably not. You probably won't need to. All right, got some more water here. Kodak Filter says it's the same guy who had everyone running to buy mahogany woods a few years ago. I like him and even uh, even like MW mahogany oh, mahogany mahogany woods. But you're going too crazy here. I mean, I don't think I'm going crazy. I think I think my expectation is. Just that I think it's going to be great, but I haven't tried it yet. And like I said, I reserve the right to change my opinion. There's, there's nothing crazy about that. <laughs> Having a high expectation. And like you said, Mahogany Woods, that was a few years ago. Taste changes in, a, in, in how many years has, has that been? You know, Taste changes. Experience changes. And if he's making a fragrance, he's not going to make Mahogany Woods. And, you know, Stephen is the type of person that generally likes a lot more fragrances than I do. So I'm very picky about fragrances. And so that's where my, my critiques and my, uh, my perspective comes from. But I think Stephen is not that way. I think Stephen is the type of person who generally finds something good in all fragrances. He likes, you know, he likes all fragrances for the most part. He's a collector, too. So I think when he's talking about Mahogany Woods, he's talking about it per, from a point of view where this is something that he likes um, and he's trying to find something good to talk about it. He's also trying to talk to it to an audience who might be thinking about getting it. I mean, I think that you're, I think that the, the point is just kind of a, a false dichotomy there. there. There isn't, just because he reviewed Mahogany Woods in a good light doesn't mean that his fragrance is gonna be Mahogany Woods. <laughs> I think that Stephen understands the difference between a, a you know his uh, what a good fragrance is and what a mass appealing fragrance is. I think you know he's going to do the best he can. Davy DeCock, uh, now we can expect a review from you as soon as it's out. You know, yeah, definitely. Frank Hansen, do we know the size of the bottles? I'm not sure. I haven't heard. Um, and maybe it's in one of his videos. He has a few videos out. One of them is a Q&A. So in the Q&A, maybe he talks about the bottle sizes. I'm not really sure. Um, for $200, I would hope that's 100 mil. Um, if it's 50 mil, then that price is getting a little too steep for me. Bryant Worley says, yes, and he's not force-feeding it. He is so eloquent with it instead of saying it's the best or that it's going to burn your face off. Yeah, I agree. I think he's doing a great job. 
He's doing a great job explaining it. Um, and in some ways, he's already reviewed it. <laughs> he's already reviewed one of them anyway. I don't know if he's talked more about the other fragrances in his line yet, but the one about, um, um, I don't know if he has a name yet, but the, the one with um, the gourmand with uh, Bertrand Duchefort, he's already described like a good bit of it. And so that made me excited to try it just from his, you know, little mini, mini review. Sarush USA, Stephen's problem is that he likes everything, which makes it hard to take his opinion as credible. Uh, okay, so I don't disagree with you there for, uh, as a reviewer. That's one reason why I think that having a wide array of reviews, positive and negative, are more helpful to an audience. Um, but what I will say in his defense, uh, I don't think that necessarily is um, the only way, I don't think that my way of reviewing is the only way to review. So the way that I think he is reviewing is he's reviewing it in a way that he enjoys the fragrance and that he thinks um, that, that people will, uh, he's making a video that he thinks that people will respond to. So that I think is his approach to it. I think that he just doesn't want to say negative things in general and that's the type of person that he is. And, um, and that he also likes fragrances a lot. So I think that, plays into how he reviews a fragrance. Personally, um, I generally like a, a point of view that has, I think this is good, I think this is bad. That way you can kind of distinguish where you land as far as um, the reviewer comes from. But a lot of, I mean, he has what, over 100,000 subscribers? He's ob he obviously knows what he's doing. So I think there's there's a lot of people who uh, who really like that, his his style, even if, even if mine is different. Human Irani says, why is DNG the one EDP so good? <laughs> Having many fall niche fragrances, still the one is something else. It is a really good scent. It is really good. Having a, uh, an argument about price. <laughs> argument about price is useless. Just buy it or don't. I know we can have disagreements about it, but you're not going to convince someone else. Ruben Suvalski says, I wish him the best, but I've never heard him say anything bad about any fragrance. I agree. Um, I think that's just his perspective. NH, what other YouTuber do you think will have a great fragrance if they released one? Okay, so I think Max Husler will have, excuse me, seltzer water, man. I think Max Husler will have a great fragrance whenever it comes out. Now, I think that he's actually creating it himself, which is why it's taking a long time. He's trying to learn uh, how to make it and stuff like that. But he's another um, YouTuber who has a great deal of experience and has really great taste. So, um, so I think that whenever he makes a fragrance, I think it'll be very good. David DeCock says, question, do you avoid doing reviews if you know you don't like a certain fragrance. I can imagine it's even more difficult to give an unbiased review if you don't like a certain note or style. Um, not generally, what I, what I typically try to do is, um, so, so I don't have to review certain fragrances, obviously. I, I'm, not, I'm not like under compulsion to review certain ones, but I try to weigh in my mind what will be, um, what will be beneficial to the audience and what will also benefit me in getting views, et cetera. So, um, for instance, uh, reviewing like a brand new niche fragrance that no one has ever heard about, I might really love it, but might not get a lot of views. Now, it depends if, um, it depends on how much I love the fragrance and love the review itself, if I will actually publish it or not. But for a fragrance that I, that I don't really care about, I might not review it unless I know 
that it will be good for me to do so. Uh, so for instance, like, like, um, you know, like the Blue Day Chanel line. Like, I don't like Blue Day Chanel. I, I like, it's so-so. It's okay. Just so-so. Um, or, you know, uh, Office One. Like, I didn't like that fragrance. I knew I wasn't going to like it, and I was right. But I knew that publishing those videos would be beneficial um, for people understanding my point of view, but also, to it, it would benefit my channel with views. So, um, and then there are other ones, like, too, like... Um, I don't like certain notes. I don't like, you know, certain rose notes. I don't like certain white flower notes or, you know, certain notes, obviously. And I try to disclose that if I don't like a certain note. Uh, so if, if I say I'm not like a huge rose fan, I'll usually say that in the review. So someone knows where my point of view is. Um, I think that's helpful in the review itself. Um, and, you know... People, people always talk about unbiased reviews, but there's no such thing. <laughs> every review is biased because every person is biased. So there's no unbiased review unless they're just talking about notes. <laughs> that's the only unbiased review. If they're just talking about facts about the fragrance, then that's the only unbiased thing that they can, they can do. Once they start getting into opinions, what they smell in a fragrance and what it reminds them of and stuff, then you're getting into bias. So, um, and I'm, I'm not an unbiased reviewer. I'm a biased reviewer. But that, to me, is my strength. That, that is where my strength comes from. But not just that I'm biased, but that I, you know, I talk about my bias, and I talk about my, my perspective, and I explain why I don't like it or I do like it. So that's one reason why I think that, like, um, that's one reason why I think, like, uh, Luca Turin is a bad reviewer because he is biased, but he doesn't explain why he doesn't like something most of the time. There are some times where he does go into great lengths about why he loves something, and sometimes where he goes into great lengths about why he doesn't like something. But for the most part, it's very hit or miss, and he doesn't really uh, describe a lot of it. And so you're left wondering, why should you care? And so I always try to make my opinion worth it to the audience um, in whichever fragrance I'm reviewing. And, um, but I don't necessarily have like, um, a fragrance to say, I, I probably won't review that. Um, if I, ahead of time, I like, I don't have a, a checklist and say, you know, I don't like homage. <laughs> I probably won't review that line or whatever. Sometimes it's just, I don't even want to try that line. Like homage. Like I don't, I, I'm tired of homage. I tried, you know, several from homage didn't like them. I just got tired of reviewing them because all the reviews were the same. I just don't like them. I don't like them. But generally, I don't have... Um, I, I Generally, I don't really have a reason not to review something. So I, I'll just review something if I think that it benefits me in some way. Or the audience. Or both. Hilary Schwartz says, he's, uh, says he said they'd come in 100 mil in the video, I believe. Okay, that's, that's great. I think that's a, a really good deal then. <laughs> Roe Monroe, he actually explains in notes instead of just telling us how awesome he is. <laughs> that's true. But Stephen is awesome, though. Brandon Joseph said, he said there will be 100 mil bottles and high quality, uh, qu excuse me, high quality lettering on it. Okay, sounds great. High quality lettering sounds good to me. I do kind of hope that the bottle will be better than a generic bottle. Um, I don't know what the bottle will be. I just hope that it's not in a generic square bottle. Though, you know, bottle's a bottle. It's not a huge deal, but I just hope that it's in a, I just hope the presentation is okay. You know, not terrible. <laughs> okay. Human Irani says he confirmed it's going to be 100 mil. Okay, great. That's great. <laughs> Lee Allen, will you have to buy date for men to review it? 
Well, I'll definitely buy a uh, sample of it. Or maybe I'll have someone donate a sample of it, but I'm not going to buy a bottle of it. Heart of Graham Troll, where can you buy it? Um, are you talking about Stevens Fragrance? I'm not really sure, but I would guess that you're going to be able to buy it in a few different boutiques right off the bat, as well as probably online. <laughs> Paul Stanier says, bit of fun. Predict the 2020 bestseller. My pen is ready. I have no idea, honestly. I can never predict that. But, okay. So here is, here is a, here is a prediction. So a lot of times what you'll find is Dior and Chanel go back and forth between setting the trend. I think Dior has set the trend for the last year or two. I think Chanel is due for a new fragrance release in their men's line. So I think we'll see what it's like, but I think that uh, Chanel's next fragrance, uh, I think Chanel's next fragrance, whenever it comes out, uh, will not be following the trend. I think it will be setting a new trend. So, um, and I don't have any information about that. That's just pure speculation. Um, but that's, that's what I would predict. I don't even know if it's coming out in 2020, but I'm sure they're coming out with another one sometime. Daniel Hall says, I just saw a full bottle of fragrance one for $35 on eBay. <laughs> Man. Shave a thon. The 2020 bestseller will be 1 million extra intense extreme. <laughs> oh, man. Orange Muscle says, why do so many frags have a powdery note? Are those cheaper, more common ingredients? I mean, they could be. Um, I think one reason is, um, I, I mean, I think one reason is, is probably just the trend at the time. Um, some fragrances had like a trend of being powdery. Like I remember right after Armani came out with Armani Code, which was powdery, a lot of fragrances had a powdery note in there. And... Um, um, I, certain fragrances automatically come off as powdery. Like Iris is one that has kind of like this powdery type of thing in there. So um, I don't think there's really any rhyme or reason other than it could be the trend at the time or it could just be ingredients that they put in there for whatever reason. And I don't necessarily think that everything that people say smells powdery smells powdery to me. So it's, you know, personal taste. Bryant Worldly says, hey, now that you've mentioned it, why not a video on best bottle designs? It's coming, um, but I, I have... Uh, I don't have a complete list yet, uh, so I'm, I'm making that list, but, but yeah, it's definitely coming. And also worse bottles. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna cut it a little bit short today, guys. So I know, I know it's been 70 minutes, so that's <laughs> cutting it short, I guess. But thank you for watching. Um, I'm sorry if I missed your questions. I was trying to go through them um, as fast as I could today instead of, instead of waiting back up. Uh, but anyway, thank you for watching. Um, 
I will see you later. I have more videos in the way. Of course, uh, go subscribe to Beast Mater Views, and I will talk to you later. Talk to you later. Bye.